Right, so this is the second part of the of the lecture on uh, the trade approach by Gordon Alport. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you the concept of trades uh, that is very central to this theory. And this is uh, one of the most important theory in psychology that then uh, will be developed, would be developed into a more sophisticated form. So I'm going to explain to you what uh, Alport mean by uh, personality traits and how it formed uh, as a as a as a concept of personality so basically personality traits uh, sometimes it could be interrelated to one another so they may overlap and sometimes they could represent very different characteristics so for example um, taking aggressiveness and hostility as an example um, people could be aggressive and hostile at the same time, but aggressiveness and hostility is a completely two different things. Yeah, so a different, uh, completely two different traits. So even though it's related and sometimes it occurs at the same time, those traits are completely different. Yeah. So, but of course, it frequently we sometimes uh, we often uh, observe that those two traits could uh, appear together, but they are two different things. And also our board says that uh, there are two types of traits, uh, two types of general traits. Uh, the first one would be the individual traits and also the second one would be uh, the common traits. Yeah. So the individual traits would be uh, very unique and particular to a person. So it, it was like a, re a, uh, a individual um, expression of our personality. While common traits it, that is uh, that are traits that we share with other people, as a <clears throat> as an identity, a shared identity, a group identity uh, to a certain uh, to the same members of a cultural group. Um, so common traits sometimes reverse to stereotypes of a group. For example, if you see a Japanese that are be not being assertive or they being very very permissive to others' people requests. Um, it's it's very typical to Japanese, and we could say that the common traits of a Japanese is that being permissive. And common traits would be uh, uh, highly influenced highly influenced by uh, social, environmental, and cultural influences because we share these traits with other people uh, that who are the same member of a cultural group as we are. And also, uh, Alport sometimes use personal disposition to uh, to uh, to dis to describe uh, personal or individual uh, traits, and and it makes uh, it so that people would not confuse the individual and also the collective part of our personality. And this personal dis disposition uh, could be varied. Depend it depends on the intensity and its significance so that's why uh, Alport uh, divided, divided uh, personal disposition into three different traits so the first one would be the cardinal traits the second would be the central traits and the third would be the second secondary traits so the personal disposition is divided into th other three different uh, traits uh, the first one would be the cardinal traits. Uh, so it appears like the central theme of our personality. So it's very pervasive and very powerful in describing the whole personality. And it touches almost every aspect of our lives. For example, if someone has a, uh, if someone has a ruling patient or being powerful as their cardinal traits, then it would be very powerful and forcing in it would be a very powerful force that dominates their behavior so it would lead to uh, sadism or chauvinism um, traits and these people would have a very um, prominent ruling passion and maybe some people would not uh, have this uh, this uh, very typical traits for example if someone has uh, someone has ruling passion as their cardinal traits. They m might be more likely to uh, to run for an office, yeah, in, in chase for political position rather than 
those who does not have this uh, cardinal traits. And the second trait would be the central traits, and it would be the most appeared and the most uh, vivid characteristics of someone's personalities, and it consists of uh, from five to ten themes that describes our behavior, that describes the general pattern of our behavior. For example, if someone has maybe uh, something like aggressiveness, self-pity, or cynicism, and those people would, um, this kind of characteristic uh, often appear when, when, a, when a friend writes you a letter of recommendation or give you a testimony about how, how, uh, the best, how best describe you as a person. So if you try to, if you want, if you try to discuss your personality, uh, how would you, uh, how, how would your friend see you as a person, then these central traits would appear as a, as a part of that description. And the last and the least influential parts uh, of our traits is that, uh, is what Alport uh, mentioned as the secondary traits. And it appears much less than the uh, central and, of course, the cardinal traits as the prominent, the most prominent and the central parts of our personality. Uh, the secondary traits would less appear and only the closest person could recognize these uh, secondary traits. And this is very weak and not often uh, appeared yeah, and in, in a common or in a daily situation. Maybe something like your preference to food or music or particular uh, if you have ad adoration or, or admiration to a figure, a certain figure, um, that would be uh, something that your closest friend would notice, not the general or your acquaintances would, would not notice this. Uh, that would be at the end of the second part of this lecture. I'm going to continue this lecture to the third part that consists of uh, motivation and also how our personality develops according to the theory, according to Alport's theory.